Crashing. Crashing. With friends. Hello, welcome with Crashing with Friends podcast. Did I mess that up already? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Crashing with Friends podcast. I'm your host today, Jackson Brayman. Over to my right, we got Andrew Blanchard. What's up, guys? And over to the far right of me, we got Kyle Hobbs. What's up? Connor Hobbs is sick this week. We uh, pray that he gets better. You got this, across, Connor. Cross the fingers. But uh, how's your week been, Cal? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, gee, uh, <laughs> my week's been pretty good. Um, been playing Midnight Suns still. Uh, what kind of game is Midnight Suns? Is it like, is it like, uh, oh, what's the word I'm look, looking for? Is it like turn-based or anything like that? Yeah, it's like a turn-based tactical strategy game. Hmm. So you get like uh, cards that have your abilities on them, and every time you you start a run, you get it shuffles like you know three or four more cards back in your hand. You're supposed to have like five to seven cards in your hand at all times, something like that. But uh, it's it's a really cool it's a really cool game, really cool system. Um, I, I really dig tactics games where you know like you. One character moves here, then you move there, then you move there. It's kind of like chess, you know, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the added benefit is this game is just Marvel Combat. So, you know, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Iron Man. All the cool ones are in there, but the ones I like to play with is like Blade and Ghost Rider. And a uh, character named Magic from the X-Men. She's cool. Also, there's a character named uh, Nico from The Runaways, another like Marvel property. But uh, it's it's really cool. Um, it deals with the demon Lilith, which is a really mm. cool like Marvel bad guy. Um, the main character of the game is like her daughter, and you're trying to like stop Lilith. She's taking over all your friends. She's taking over like takes over Venom, takes over um, the Hulk, and different characters. It's pretty fun. I really enjoy it. Um, it's just fun. It's another great game to play on my Steam Deck. Uh, another game I'm playing uh, this week is that Ho- Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, I'm loving that game. It's really cool. Um, of course, I got put into Slytherin. That's what I wanted. And I was going to look up a guide how to get into Slytherin. But then I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to see if the answers I give put me into Slytherin. It did. Yeah, I was, was wondering how they were going to place you. I, I, I wasn't sure because I haven't seen any footage on actual placement yet. It's, it's pretty cool. So the, the decisions that you make place you. Yeah, I mean, how it works is like it'll ask you like a couple of questions. Yeah. And... It, you can give two different answers, but I think it's based off your second answer. Like, whatever your second answer is, that's, like, it'll suggest, hey, you should go to this one. But if you're like, but I want to be this house, you could just choose to switch over to that house. And as soon as you do, he'll be he'll remark on, he's like, ah, oh, but you also have this quality, which should put you in this house. That's cool. They did it really well, as far as the sorting hat goes. Yeah. Um... But it so far for me it's it's running really good, plays good. I'm surprised it runs so well on my Steam Deck. Um, I'm just I just I know I say it every week, but the Steam Deck is like the best gaming thing I've had in years and years and years. It's so cool just being able to play all my favorite games just in any room in the house. Yeah. Play it in bed before I go to sleep, you know. Be able to sit in the same room as my kids as they're watching some crappy cartoon. Be able to play Steam Deck while they're sitting there is pretty awesome. Yeah, I'd really like to get one. Yeah, they're it's they're for you know they're not extremely affordable, but they're affordable. Um, I think with everything that you get with them, you know the emulators and all that, I, I feel like it'd be worth it. It's so great. Yeah, the emulator part of it is is pretty great. Um, watched a movie today that I've been, it's been on my list for a long time. A uh, movie called The Equalizer Two. Yeah. You guys seen that yeah. movie? Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Yeah. I've never seen the second one, but I have seen the first. I'd seen the first one and loved the first one, but the second one, I'd never heard anything about it. You know, I do, it came out, but I never heard any reviews or anything. But uh, it'd been on my list for a while, and I was going through YouTube, and I saw a random clip, um, him talking to Pedro Pascal. Is it Pedro Pascal's like the main villain of the second movie? 
Nice. Yeah. That so, kind of makes me want to watch it now. Exactly. <laughs> I saw that because I was looking at something and I saw it, saw that clip and I watched it. I was like, man, this movie looks fantastic. And then I watched that earlier today. It was fantastic. It's really cool. Really good. Really good kills and really precise kills and whatnot, I like that it's you know? got that that John Wick feel. It does. It does have that John Wick feel, but a lot more personal, a lot more closer. You know. Um, but I really enjoyed that. Uh, and that's pretty much all that's been going on with my life. Uh, Andrew, what about you, man? How's your life been going? It's been pretty good. You know, I haven't, I haven't had uh, a lot going on. Uh, you know, I was, I was pretty disappointed because I was expected to get my, uh, my PC upgrades this past Tuesday and I'm actually getting it next Tuesday. Hmm. Uh, it kind of works out though. Cause, um, you know, I was going to pre pre-order, uh, Hogwarts, but you know, I, it, it, it the time wise it works out better next week anyway you know upgrade my pc and then buy hogwarts and probably spend all weekend on that <laughs> and i was just thinking when we were doing the intro in jackson's uh hand mannerisms it reminded me of like a a, a <laughs> police directing traffic <laughs> it's like man you'd be a good uh, traffic cop <laughs> no it's 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 a uh, it's been a good week i'm uh, excited to do the podcast with you guys uh, it sucks about connor I hope he feels better. He's been sick for a couple of days now. Got the fam upstairs. The boy's got the vitamin C. He'll be using good hands. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly just looking forward to the Hogwarts Legacy, man. It's a lot of fun, man. I'm not super far into it, mainly because my PC is just having it run like crap right now. Yeah. And it's like the... Same thing that everyone else is dealing with for the most part from what I see online. Like Is it lagging? Like what what Well the, the thing issues? is, like I had the same thing that everyone else had online. It worked perfectly for the opening part of the game, but as soon as you got to Hogwarts, that's when you start seeing their like frame rate like start to dip. And yeah, like the thing is like it'll run like sixty frames per second in like most places. But as soon as you get to a brand new area, it dips way down to like 20 frames a second. And yeah, it's insane. Is that what you were talking about earlier, Kyle, about the, uh, the, patch, the patches that they need to fix? Like yeah. latency? Yeah. It seems like it stutters for a lot of people. Stuff like doesn't load in immediately. Like whenever I show up, like if I'm running, sometimes I'll just see like people pop up up here out Man. of thin air so. it's kind of a bummer to hear you know you've been waiting for for so long for a new harry potter game to come out and you know right out the gate they're having issues yeah um that being said it's like i know that if that game like ran perfectly yeah it's gonna be awesome yeah. you know so looking forward to my new uh 3060 ti graphics card it's like man it's like night and day i can't wait it's gonna look amazing yeah, they really did a good job on that Harry Potter game. It looks really good. Like, the graphics look really good. I can't wait to just explore. Yeah. I can't wait to see everything. Like, whenever um, you walk into the Slytherin room, like, the door transform, like, the wall transforms in front of you and a door pops up and a crazy snake just shows up and makes a doorway. It's it's so cool every time I see it. I'm like, this is rad. For Hufflepuff, it looks like you just go to the basement and there's like a whole bunch of barrels like lined up against the wall. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> they just threw them in the basement. <laughs> it's like Kingsman Golden Circle. Like all of a sudden, like all these big old barrels, just like you tap on one of them and then it, one of them turns into a door. It's pretty cool, but that is definitely different. I was thinking about making a character like all four classes, just to just or all four. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do that at some point. I definitely wanted to be uh, Slytherin, too. Uh, I heard that Gryffindor has the most quests, though, uh, and only Hufflepuff have the Azkaban prison quest line. So I guess if you want to see Azkaban, you got to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> yep, that was another. That was part of my secondary character just because I wanted to see the Azkaban stuff. I saw, like, a little clip of the, the Azkaban, and it looks, it looks sweet. It's definitely worth playing a, a, a Hufflepuff to play. It's cool because you get to see some ancestors of like the Weasleys and the Blacks. In Azkaban? No, because um, it's, it's how far behind or in front of Harry Potter? Like a couple hundred years, I think. Um, I believe, uh, like, pretty sure the 
the guy, whoever, like, what do they call him? Like, the guy that runs Hogwarts? Headmaster. Yeah. The headmaster is Sirius Black's, like, great-grandfather. So, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's correct. Probably a couple hundred years then. It's pretty cool, though. Um, Yeah. Jack, how's your week been going, man? Eh, can't complain really too much, I guess. Just, uh... Ah, man. It's so weird, like, when you, like, look back at your week and you're like, man, what did I do last week? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's literally what I was thinking about when Kyle asked me that. <laughs> Didn't do a whole lot this week. I just adulted. <laughs> I know you got that, uh, Night Versus. Yeah, dude. Uh, like, not too long ago, uh, like... How long ago was it whenever we went and saw Night Versus in Kansas City? Gosh, that was at least like... It was before the pandemic, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so three, at least three years ago. Like 2019, something like that. It's, it's crazy and to think of how long that pandemic was going, too. Mm-hmm. Three years. So we saw Night Versus in Kansas City in like 2019, 2018. They were torn with Strawberry Girls and Andres. And. I think that's how you say his name. I've never actually heard it. I've only seen it spelled. Yeah. But uh, they put on a pretty, like, kick-ass set. Um, I was, like, really, like, disappointed with, like, how there was, like, almost no one there, though. Like... You think they'd be better, though, you know? Get to enjoy it. I mean, it kind of ended up being that way because I ended up talking with uh, uh, Eric and Proto. He's, like... In my opinion, he's like the greatest drummer. I mean, I don't want to say greatest drummer in terms of like, like, Skill you know, wise. like, I don't want to compare him <laughs> against someone like Neil Peart or Danny Carey or something like that. Cause that's like kind of unfair, but cause at one point, like all those guys were my favorite drummers, but then I discovered this dude and he's been my favorite drummer ever since I discovered him. I and, can't uh, say I know any of them. Struck up a conversation with him. Uh, I had already bought like a whole bunch of Night Versus stuff because I was a drooling fanboy for a bit. And I'm still a huge fanboy, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> I talked to him. Um, he was going to try to give me like a uh, like a drum head. A drum like, head? Yeah, drum. You know, it's like the, 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 dun, the, dun, the, dun, the yeah. heads. Like he's going to give you the whole head? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going to give me one. He was like... He's like, hey, man, I want to give you a drum head. And then he, like, goes back to his van, comes back. He's like, man, I don't got one, dude. I don't have an extra one, man. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, it's all cool, man. I was just stoked to be talking to him. And at one point, I got to stand right behind the drum set and all that stuff. Did you get to play it? Nah, that would have been cool. But <laughs> I wasn't that brave. I was like, hey, man, give me the sticks. Let me do something that's not even <laughs> near as good as what you can do. <laughs> Let me, bang Let me a little show bit. you. <laughs> bang around. But, uh. Yeah, over the years, I just uh, kept, uh, I don't know, I would, like, comment on, like, all their band stuff and stuff like that. I actually created an Instagram just to start following Night Versus on there because they post extra clips on there. They don't post it anywhere else. Uh, then uh, not too long ago, I think, like, during 2020, they had, it was, like, the time when all these bands were just doing live streams and stuff, and it was kind of like a pay-per-view type thing. So I was like, okay, well, I fucking love this band. I'll support this band. I did it. I did a Silent Planets live stream. Um, trying to think who else I watched. I think I watched a Contortionist as well. But uh, yeah, that Night versus one. I was like, dude, I'm getting this one. I'm fucking. Rec- I'm going to record it. I'm not going to upload it. It's just going to be for my personal thing. Uh, after it's like as soon as it was done, I like messaged him. I was like, dude, thanks for the show. The show is great. And I was like, here's a picture of my face. And it was uh, the dude from. Uh, the end of Indiana Jones is face melting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was like, thanks, dude. And don't forget, I still owe you that drum head. And he's like, Eric, I'm probably... I was like, oh, shit. Fucking re- he actually remembers me. And this is like, year, like a year or two later. And then not too long ago, like just this week, just randomly in the mail, I fucking receive a big, huge package. And I open it up and it's like the kick drum head from night versus nice it's got the big symbol on the front of it and everything oh yeah and so uh, signed by everyone in the band and i was like dude this is like the coolest shit ever man it is really cool. That is cool i freaked out i was like holy shit it came yeah we were playing games together and then i all of a sudden i hear jackson go like <laughs> oh man 
oh dude oh my gosh <laughs> yeah dude i yeah. was freaking out i was like i couldn't believe it like i couldn't figure out how to open it man i was like i tried to use my keys and I incidentally like losing my keys that night because I tried to use my keys to open it, but then I don't know what happened. I don't know where they dropped. They ended up being like dropping right behind my bed, and, and the way that they were that laying, box. <laughs> the way that they were laying behind <laughs> my bed, like it was like the only way I could have like known they were back there is if I lifted up the entire mattress and I had looked under the mattress and like scooped the side and all that. The lanyard wasn't hanging down, so I couldn't see it or anything like that. It was just in the perfect spot where I couldn't find it. But anyway, I got that kick drum head, and it's hanging up on my wall now. I've got so much night versus stuff now. It's cool it came through. It's pretty rad. Man, I would get it framed if I was you, dude. I mean, I want to figure it. I want to figure it out. Can you really frame that? Yeah. It's, It's thin. It's not, like, thick, you know? Yeah, it would be like probably just like framing a circle painting. Yeah. If you just put that on your wall, there's a chance it could fall off and then like hit the ground and break. And that's what I'd be worried about. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool though. Yeah, dude. Put it on show. Did you catch any? Uh, versus album coming out soon, dude. I mean, I'm stoked for it. <laughs> Did you catch any of the movies or anything? Ah, oh, man. Trying. I feel like there was one something that I watched new this week, but I cannot remember for the life of me what it is. <laughs> Hold on. I watched uh, Black Panther finally, the new one. What did you think of that? Wakanda Forever. I thought it was really good. I uh, I liked the tributes that they did to, to Chad. Um, I thought the movie was was really good. As far as Black Panther goes, anyway, you know, they it, you know I don't know if anyone has seen that. Have you guys seen it? I've seen it. Yeah. Like it, nothing too crazy happens in that in that movie, but it was a good movie. Yeah. Connor had watched it and he mentioned to me he didn't didn't care for it too much. Yeah, he he didn't like the lack of Black Panther being in it. Yeah, I mean you call it Black Panther and you gotta have Black Panther in it. Yeah, it's just a long like uh, memorial wake pretty much for Black Panther. Yeah, they really kind of of draw it out a little bit. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot, but I just enjoy Marvel stuff, man. It just doesn't take much for me to be happy with Marvel. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm getting what I loved as a kid, but all the time, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's nice that they're uh, they're still coming out with movies. Ant Man's coming up. I think I'm gonna go see that with. Uh, Ant Man comes with, out this week. Yeah, I think he does this this weekend. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I want to see that really bad. Did you um, find it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, this movie called Villains. It stars uh, the same guy that played the new Pennywise in it. Okay. Is it Bill Skarsgård, Stellan Skarsgård? Stellan is... Bill Skarsgård. Is it Bill? I think it's Bill. Which one's the one from The Northman? Uh, the, the main the, actor's name in The Northman. Uh, He's one of the yeah. Skarsgård, too. Uh, Mickey. Mickey Skarsgård. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I get, I get what you're saying. But yeah, yeah, Bill Skarsgård. It. Uh, it's like him and his girlfriend, they play like these... Criminal, like, they start out with, like, them on the run from the law. And they pull over into this house that's, like, out in the, like, it's, like, out in the woods, but it's, like, right off the road. It's, like, autumn and stuff. Like, it looks like, it looks like a really nice mansion type house. They go inside it. They're, like, oh, no one's here. And they kind of just, like, raid the place, like, drink and eat food and stuff like that. And they're going to, like, hightail it like, the next morning or something like that, they go to the basement, and they see, that like, there's, like, a kid that's, like, chained up. And they're, like, do, like, do we help her? Like, they're conflicted because they're criminals, you know? Like, like, so they're, like, like, what do we do? Like, do we just unlock her and let her go? Or, but as they're trying to figure that out, the owners of the home come home and knock them out, and when they wake up, like, the owners of the home are, like, these, uh, they're kind of like a, the main detective from Glass Onion, how they have that accent, and they act just like fine and dandy and all that, but they're like crazy as hell. Like I don't know, I definitely liked the movie. I thought it was pretty good. I'd give it like a like seven and a half to eight. Like check it out. It's not like full horror. It's kind of like 
semi-black comedy, but yeah, check it out if you're a fan of Bill Skarsgård. And but I think like the villains of the movie definitely stole the show. Hence, the movie's called Villains. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to give away the ending, but it's pretty good. Okay. I know a lot of people uh, look forward to your scary movie slash horror movie. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> I'm su- I'm surprised that Rachel actually watched Terrifier too. I still need to get her thoughts on um her watching that. Did she say anything to you about it? Uh she she did. Do you want to get her opinion on it? I mean, I don't want to make her Let come. me get her let me get her opinion on it. All right, Rachel. <laughs> now she's here. Ta da. <laughs> it's magic. All right, Rachel. What did you think about Terrifier too? Okay, so you told me that you thought it had more of a storyline than the first one. It does. You think so? It has more story, <laughs> more of a storyline than what's going on in the first one. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's Halloween at least, you know, and they're with the girl. Yeah, and but the it's dad still and everything. You know? It's still general, you know, ninety like old school ninety slasher, yeah, like grindhouse stuff. I still don't think that any scene compares to the one from the first one, though. Really, with the girl. The hacksaw one? Yes. <laughs> that ha- was definitely worse than any of the other ones. I don't know, man. I thought the bedroom murder scene Okay, that well, in- I guess it lasted a little longer and it was drawn out and she was yeah. still... Yeah, okay. That's, that was what got me about it. It was like, man, they drew that one out. <laughs> yeah. And just when you thought it was over, nah. Yeah, it was, you know, it's hard to take those scenes seriously, obviously. I mean, I know that kind of stuff happens in real life, you know, but. Yeah, but. I mean, hopefully not too often. (laughs) The way that it's done in this movie, it kind of like, I don't know. The best way I can describe it is like, uh, it seems so carnivalish, like how everything's happening. Like, at the same time, you're like, damn, that's messed up. Holy, holy hell, that's messed up. Yeah. I don't but, understand that. Like, is he just magic? That's a, he's I'm got a, that clown magic that like keeps him from dying. He can get shot a bazillion times, and he can and, get like, decapitated and yeah, birthed stabbed in a in different the location, <laughs> but just his head, and he's still alive. Okay. So, do you think, based on the ending, that there will be a, a third one? I think there will be, with especially the, with the success of this one. Yeah. Like, he had two hundred fifty thousand dollars or something like that to work with. To make the movie, and he's made eleven million dollars off it so far. Wow! At least last I heard, he's probably made a lot more off of it since then. Yeah, but I guess you know a lot of people. I had heard that they would throw up if, or just from certain scenes. You know, probably specifically the one in the bedroom. Yeah, that's the one that everyone <laughs> is. That I don't know if that's the one I'm talking about. But like, yeah. Yeah, Helen's but I, had, I guess I don't have a weak stomach. I do when it comes to certain things, but not, like not that. I is guess it just, just gory I'm or is it to... bloody? Like what, yeah, what's I mean, it's, yeah, it's both. Oh, it's both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's over the top gore, really, for the most yeah. part. Like like cheesy. Like is it bad? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, it makes it tolerable because of that. But it's still like. Have looks, you ever, have you ever guess, seen any of the you know, Hatchet movies? I don't think so. It's kind of like the same thing, except this one's Hatchet is all about a. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like an inbred hillbilly type dude that's like, oh, it's like, like the hills like, have eyes. Yeah, it's ex- <laughs> exactly like that. It's like that, but it's just one one dude out in the middle of the swamp. Okay. In the bayou. Down in the he bayou. Was born on the bayou. Yeah, and he doesn't talk, the clown doesn't talk at all. I don't think he says one word no. at all through both of the movies, right? No, he doesn't. Yeah. But his imaginary friend does. You remember there's a part like, you know the imaginary friend kid? The girl? The little girl? Yes. Yeah, I didn't realize that she was imaginary until that guy at the laundromat saw him. Yeah, you see, at the beginning of the movie, like, that that part where that one guy saw him in the laundromat, that clearly says, like, okay, it's an imaginary friend. But there's another part in that movie where that same imaginary friend, like, grabs the phone and is, like, talking in the well, In the boy's voice. voice. Yeah, yeah. And the boy can see, and other people can see her, like the girl, yeah. the main girl. Like, the what's really going see. on here? Yeah. 
I think she's going to be part of Terrifier 3. And that she, was weird how be, she like came back after he stabbed her in the stomach. And then. She's going to be like the new like, like the badass final girl like in horror movies. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Yeah, I think I I guess I probably like that the second one better than the first one. I don't know. I mean, I watched them so close together that it just kind of seemed like a continuance because the first or the second one started right where the, you know the first one ended. And so yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what I don't know how many stars I'd give it, but you know. Ah. Uh, let's not worry about stars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's not worry about the stars. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Rachel. No problem. I'm glad to get your opinion on that movie. I'm always trying to just show other people horror movies, and whenever they do watch them, I'm like, yo, tell me what you thought. So, yeah. I'm always up for a good horror cheesy movie. It was crazy, but I'm ready for the next recommendation <laughs> whenever you have it. All right. Do you want something that's softer or harder? <laughs> well, I like more of like, what is the Barbarian, the last one that you... Told me, was it called The Barbarian, or what was it called? That one's kind of, like, more suspenseful. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Okay. Or, or demonic possession, that kind of stuff, more than... I like The Barbarian. More than just straight That's a good up movie. tearing people well. apart the entire time. <laughs> you want to know, uh, like, uh, the secondary ending to Barbarian? The, like, mother, or whatever you call it? Yeah. The, the mother, like, ends up, like, living... Or whatever, the fall. Like, she lives through the fall, and they end up just getting her back into society. Like, the credits were supposed to roll, but, like, during the credits, you're supposed to see her get a job, like, get get a house, and, like, all this other stuff. But it's just, like, you know what she looks like. (laughs) So it's just, like, she just gets integrated back into society. Gross. Yeah. I wouldn't hire her. That would be weird. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, that would be. Kyle, you never saw Barbarian, right? Never. Okay. <laughs> well, you never. Well, you did see it, Chapter Two. Remember uh, the part like where uh, Homegirl goes back to her old apartment, and then it's got that old lady monster. That's what this Barbarian chick looked like. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Kyle. That's exactly what she looks like. Uh. Just more, I guess, human form. Andrew, you got anything you want to talk about? Uh, not anything that comes to mind. You know, I was going to say uh, uh, thanks again for uh, letting us crash at your house uh, for my 30th. Oh, yeah. I forgot your, you had your birthday party at my house this last week. You turned yeah. that dirty 30, didn't you? Yeah, I'm dirty 30. <laughs> I'm an old man. No, it was fun, though. We had a we had a good time. A lot of friends. It's definitely beats the bar, man. That. We walk in there, we were only there for 10 minutes and ready to get out of there. It was crazy. I'm glad we relocated here. For the next year, you get to say, I'm 30, flirty, and thriving now. Oh, yeah? I need to write that down. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jackson? Anything come to mind? Uh, Yeah, I mean, we did this uh, with, like, games to shows not too long ago whenever Last of Us came out. Well, Hogwarts Legacy just came out. Let's talk about... Movies to games or shows to games. Like, what would be like something sick to yeah, we, play we were, in game form? We were actually just talking about Last of Us uh, a minute ago. Um, <laughs> Someone should make a game of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy with the show so far. It, it's uh, portrayed the game pretty well. Um, I think we're on the uh, the fifth episode now. I think we is what we decided. Um, I'm enjoying the show. It's a uh, I don't know. I, you, you said you watched it, right? Last I've seen us. the first three episodes. I have not I have played. Not watched episode four or five yet. I have not played the second game, so I don't know what happens for the ending of the second one. But uh, luckily, we're not there yet in the show, so I have I have time. I've been watching Faye actually. She's been playing it. She's been playing the second game. Yeah, I've been watching her play through it and helping her a little bit. How far has she got? She's about done. She. Uh, She's to the part where they switch up Ellie. So you're playing the other side now. You're playing the other girl from, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think um, it's, so wait, she's from the Fireflies. Is this the first time you're playing <clears throat> as the other girl? 
Yeah. Um, and you haven't switched back to Ellie yet? You, do you switch back? Yeah, but so I'm saying you played as Ellie, and then you play, now you're playing as, what's her, what, do you know what her name is? I do uh, not know what her name is. I cannot, cannot remember. Uh, I meant Martha. But, but you you're playing Martha. as the blonde blonde girl. Sarah is it Sarah? I think it's Sarah. Yeah, I just Swan Swan I just Swanson. Say, so I just want to say Martha. <laughs> she kind of looks like a Martha. But you're playing as Sarah right yeah, now, right? Yeah. Okay, so you think you're you're you think she's how long do you think she's been playing the the new girl? Well, I'm saying the whole game overall. Oh god, I don't know. We we periodically play it, so we haven't done like a. Like, oh, just sit down and play through it. We, we're th- we're kind of doing like multiple days, so I think she, I I don't think you're as far as you think you are. I knew it was a big game, um, so yeah, I don't. I think we might be halfway if I had to guess. Have you been to a hospital yet? Uh, only when Ellie goes back to the hospital, she's looking for. So you've been before, back. But that was before you switch over. So she's playing the new girl now after that. So I think we did all the hospital stuff. So is there so do you remember vividly what was going on? Like do you remember a scene where she's like Ellie's like messing with the black chick in the basement? I don't remember the black chick. Okay. That's my favorite part of the whole game. That part of, uh, it's not my favorite part of the whole game. <laughs> it's the part in my in my head that I think about every time I think about that game. It's just so much intent, so much like rage is going through m- my mind whenever I think about that scene. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah, it's so insane, dude. That man, <laughs> The Last of Us Part Two is such a crazy game. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed the first one. Yeah. These days, I'll uh, play through the second one. Probably when she's done, I'll I'll play it once through. <laughs> um, but as far as a uh, a movie or a TV show that I would like to see converted into a game. Um, I would like to see something like the first season of uh, it's an HBO show. You're watching it right now. Um, D- detective, true detective. I would like to see something like true detective, like a really, really good cop thriller turned into like a game like true detective. Basically, basically Mad Max. <laughs> what? Like pretty much what Mad Max is. Mad Max. Uh, no, is not or Ma- my bad. Mad Ma- Max Payne. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is not a post-apocalyptic <laughs> thing. Mad Max, is something different. Max Payne, kind of like Max Payne, yeah. Um, yeah, I, think I really loved cool. Max Payne back in the day. Yeah, Max Payne yeah, was needs a, good a game. resurgence. They're redoing uh, um, this. The company that made those games, uh, the ones who made Control, uh, Remedy, they made the original two Max Paynes, and then they sold Max Payne to uh, Rockstar. Rockstar made the third one, but Rockstar is letting Remedy remake the first and second ones right now. That's awesome. And they're re- so. yeah, they're redoing all of it. They're like adding stuff to it and making making them more cohesive together. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be cool, especially I'm with. I'm really stoked now. <laughs> yeah, especially with how they did control. Can you imagine how cool Mad Max or uh, God dang it, Jackson, not Mad Max, Max Payne's gonna be, man. Mad Max Payne is gonna be sweet. <laughs> Mad yeah. Max, Max Payne. Like, cause they are the ones who invented bullet time. You know what I'm saying? The slow motion dive forward, bang, 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 bang. You know, uh-huh. that's the Matrix bullet time type thing. All the different crazy. Uh, you know, kills you can get with the the slow motion bullets. Yeah, I remember playing the first one like for the first time, like because I begged my parents to let me like get it so I could play it, and they finally caved in because it was like, the game had been out for a good while, so it was on sale for twenty bucks, and I was like, as soon as I like got home, started playing it, and then like my mom like walks in on like me walking in to see like a dead baby in a crib and I was she was like what is going on and I was like <laughs> just let me play this <laughs> don't take it away <laughs> don't stare mom <laughs> um my parents had a good habit of taking stuff away from me as a kid oh what I mean what good parent doesn't do that to their kids 
I've, I've, I can't tell you the amount of times I've taken something from Anakin because I'm like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this or you're grounded. Yeah. What's an example? Uh, it's mainly computer and stuff like that. It's mainly his Xbox if because that's that's his baby. Yeah, I really like. Unfortunately, that was, I know that it was awesome. Nah, uh, like I mean, uh, like for example, like my my old stepmom. I had a copy of Jackass number two on DVD when it <laughs> first came out. Okay, I, you're saying like that? Yeah, then. I took so. it over to my dad's house, like for pretty much the whole family to watch it. Oh God. And everyone in the family loved it except for my stepmom. And uh, she just walked in on like the end where uh, they revealed to him that it, uh, he's got pubes on his face. And he's like, fucking fuck, fucking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one, the one who's a terrorist in the, in the taxi? Yeah, yeah, yeah the that was one of my scenes. favorite episodes. But, it, movies. but it was like, it was like the first, like, it was like the first, like, 10 minutes of anything where everything that we heard was just effing this, effing yeah. that, effing this, okay. effing that. And yeah, my stepmom immediately was like, you shouldn't be watching this. And just like, as soon as, as soon as, I mean, we got to finish the movie at least, but as soon as it was over, um, like I couldn't find the DVD anywhere. And I was like, Hey, I'm about to head home. Like, keep, I want that DVD back. And she was like, shouldn't be having that. Probably snapped it in half already. No, nah, she didn't snap it in half. My my dad like gave it back to me like sneakily, like I think like a week like next week and I went over there. He was like, Hey, just try not to bring the stuff over. Jackass is one of those movies like you like it or you don't. I mean Jack it, it is I don't know. I, it, I yeah, I guess I haven't really taken anything like that from Anakin, you know, I as far as like lewd stuff like that. My parents did that with us with like Team America World Police. Um <laughs> And then yeah. they also did that with us with uh, Heavy Metal, the original Heavy Metal. Yeah. My mom did that to South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. For some reason, like, I somehow was able to talk her into letting me rent it. And then she... <laughs> I didn't watch that movie for, like, more than, like, three minutes. Because as soon as it got to shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker, <laughs> my mom was like, wait a minute. <laughs> It wasn't, no, she didn't walk in on the song, but she walked in on the part, like, where they go to, they're out on the lake, and they're all repeating the movie. They're like, no, you fucked your uncle. <laughs> she was like, you are not watching this. Starship Troopers was another one. She, she walked in on me, uh, watching uh, the Rico and Redhead. I forget her name, whoever the Redhead was. Watched them, like, getting it on. She's, like, sucking on his nipple and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, Top comes off. My mom was like... You are not supposed to be watching this. <laughs> I was getting, trying to get away with stuff like that all the time as a kid. And that was like at the time where I, I was like so young, I didn't even know what sex was. I, whenever I saw it, I was like, this is a weird form of wrestling. Yeah. yeah. You never truly know what sex is until someone tells you what sex is. Yeah. You know? The first time I saw sex was on Jerry Maguire. It was like during a sex scene, and I was like, what's going on there? And my mom was like, they're wrestling. So it, it <laughs> just turned into wrestling to me. Yep. It might be why I have such a weird obsession with watching the WWE still. <laughs> You're just trying to see a little bit of slippage. <laughs> Some nipple slippage. Yeah, a little bit of insertion on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, man. I hope it happens with these next two guys. <laughs> <laughs> see some hairy nipples. Yeah. <laughs> this next guy is burly. I really want to see, I want to see what happens. Uh, back to the original premise, I was also thinking about uh, the Power Rangers. I would love to see a really cool version of the Power Rangers, but like during the day, it, it being like a kind of like a bully sim, you know, how like you go through class, stuff like that, like a persona kind of thing. Um, through the day, you go through classes and um, maybe slowly you learn that some of your teachers are bad guys. And as Power Rangers in, the, in your regular form your your kid form you try to figure out what's going on and get to the bottom of who the bad teachers are and then you know you still fight bad guys and stuff like that i think it'd be cool to see like uh like the transformation from kid to a power ranger that that would be really cool and then like the the zord fights would be sweet um, i would like to see that personally I was uh, thinking of one on the way up here that I thought would be cool. And I would do this in, like, the same game style format as 
or like as far as this animation goes, I would do it in the same thing as Hello Neighbor or a Good Neighbor, whatever it's called. Hello Neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello Neighbor. Do that same animation, but make a Home Alone game. Mm. Yeah, that would be fun. Like you have to like set up traps and stuff like that, and you have to try to like get them to like okay, I got to make sure that they try to run for me upstairs, and that sets off a trap, stuff like that. And you can have like the whole. Ah, whole home alone property or whatever so you can have you know their home you can have the hotel in new york you can have the ah man what was was that called the renovated place the place is going through renovation like the uncle's house yeah the uncle's house yeah you can do the park Mm -hmm. i don't know i think that'd be something cool to look into maybe I don't know how you would do the whole trap thing, but yeah. I was like, man, Home Alone would be a cool game if they could figure out how to do it. I think it'd be cool to have a Digimon game, but I don't know how you would make it to where it's it's not like the other games. I mean, they, they, they've got newer Pokemon games. I feel like it'd be so similar to that. You know? Like, they've been doing Digimon games for so long, but nothing that's been like super rad yeah you know growing up digimon was like one of my favorite shows to watch and the fact mm-hmm. that we don't really have any good digimon games who's your favorite digimon just real quick metal Grumon. mine was one. the or metal Graymon. i don't remember what his name is he's the he's the bunny with the machine guns on his hands you know what i'm talking oh, about he's oh yeah, yeah i know what you're talking about yeah, yeah he was my favorite and i can't even remember his name it's been so long I was always a big fan of uh, Scarecrow Mon. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah. Although I was like, man, this is a cool villain right here. And the fact that they can uh, combine, can't they? Two. I don't know about uh, that. There was a. It was in one of the movies. I think that so it might be only like a specific thing, but there That's was. It. I'm sorry, I said oh, Scarecrow Mon. I meant to say Puppet Mon. I think we all knew what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Pokemon, uh, not Pokemon. Uh, Power Rangers that you were talking about would, would be pretty cool. Just uh, the, the robot bo- boss battles that you could create. Just seeing the destruction of a city as you're fighting them. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're you think, like, man, I've got one right on the tip, like, tip of my brain, but it's just not coming forward. That's what's happening to me right now, man. It's like, man... I've got one right on the brink. <sighs> Should ask Rachel how her uh, week was going while she was down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. I also think it would be cool to see a Mandalorian video game. Oh yeah, just like a bounty hunter type game as as a Mandalorian. Yeah, I, I would like the the bounty hunter more so than the Mandalorian. I think just because that's my preference. I think I like bounty hunter better. Is like a Boba Fett game or a Mandalorian game? Probably just a Boba Fett. I think. I mean, yeah, he is a bounty hunter. But yeah, you're right. Slowly, I was, about the, it, I was like, yeah, slowly in the Mandalorian, he's becoming like he's gonna take over or take back Mandalore and stuff like that. And, yeah, I think I like Boba Fett more so than The Mandalorian. All right, so they've done, like, Control with, like, the SCP, like, universe mm-hmm. for the most part. You should do, like, a Men in Black type game. That'd be game. cool. I mean, that could work. You wouldn't be able to have superpowers or anything like that, but you can still get, like, access to a huge array of guns. If You, you gotta get the Dorsey Cricket, I think that's yeah. what it's called. Those giant cannon type guns are cool. The ones that look like big old silver super soakers. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to get my gun. First Man in Black was dope, dude. Yeah, let's think about it. And we're talking about Marvel movies, and I'm surprised there's not more Marvel games like until recently. You know, I was thinking about Silver Surfer and how awesome that would be as a game. Yeah. I, I think Iron Man would be a pretty. Dope game. EA's work, uh, EA Motive is working on an Iron Man game right now. Well, there you go, man. Someone out there knows. <laughs> <laughs> Asking you shall receive. Honestly, a lot of those, 
most of those like Marvel characters would be dope, like to play with. Yeah, play a uh, Rocket Raccoon. Be able to. Uh, well, we got the Guardians of the Galaxy game, and that game was a ten out of ten. Yeah. So that all the more reason to come out with you know single character games now, kind of like they did for the movies when they built up to the Avengers. Yeah, they got that Wolverine game coming out soon from Insomniac. Yeah, I never did finish Control. I wish I would have. It it definitely. Um, it has a kind of a weird ending. Not gonna lie, I whole, feel like whole game's weird. Yeah, it's setting up a second game for sure. Yeah, the way that ends, it now. definitely feels like it's setting up for a second game, which I'm hoping for. They better have like a second game in the works or something. Do you think it's kind they of drawn are. out that game? It, uh, I know I've only I I don't think I made it halfway yet, but I feel like the game's kind of drawn out at least in the beginning. It's a longer game. But it's just cool stuff upon cool stuff upon yeah. cool stuff the whole time. Going through the ashtray maze was like the coolest part of the game for me. I loved all the scenes where you f- turn a, a light switch on and off. Like you'll click it and then you'll auto set in another spot, you know, like the totally different area yeah. of where you were. It's like click the switch three times. Yeah, there's so many cool things about that game. It's like the first like... It's the first real good interpretation of like the SCP universe without them actually having to take SCP material because of copyright issues, obviously. But yeah, um, another property that I would like to see turn into a game is um, an old property, but one that I've always been a huge fan of. And if anybody ever like talks about it, I'm always like, "Oh, dude, you're a cool person." Is a, a show called Reboot. It was a show on Cartoon Network, Toonami, back in the day. Man, Toonami. Yeah, it would come on like right before or after Dragon Ball Z. I can't remember. but um, Done in that really old computer 3D animation. Yeah, I believe it was one of the first shows that was done in that old computer-generated um, type of art, you know, that computer-generated stuff. But uh, yeah, it's just basically the inside of a computer. It takes place in a place called Mainframe. And there's a uh, characters called Guardians, and every once in a while, um, the users will start a game, and a purple GameCube will come out of the sky, land, and the Guardians will have to get there first before the game lands, land where the game's going to drop, and then boom, they're inside the game. And the Guardians' job is basically to defeat the Guardians, or defeat the, uh, the users, so the user is just regular people like us. But they don't know that, you know. But uh, I would love to see the interpretation of that, different games spawning in. Maybe it'd be like an ongoing game and creators would put new games in there every once in a while or something. But uh, it's Reboot is such a cool show slash story that it's just a shame that it hasn't been adapted into something else. Yeah, there's a, a lot of kid shows, like cartoons, that I would have liked to have seen in movies uh, now. Have you ever... Watch that show. It's called Code Lyoko. Oh, yeah. I think that would be a really good movie. There was a lot of cool, like, Toonami shows back in the day that would be really cool to see. Um, yeah, Toonami was a shit back in the day. Yeah, a lot of those anime shows, they just need to be done by a nice, a good Hollywood studio with a good director, not just, like, a crappy, like, Japanese version movie. That can, I've seen so many of those that are like, oh, a live action version of Bleach and it sucks so bad. Or yeah. live action version of. Did they have that live action Bleach on Netflix? Is that what? Was that I, what I saw a, a couple different live action versions about that. It seems uh, like the color is always very weird. It's always darker than it should be. And the motion's always shot weird. It's just, I don't know. A lot of those. Live adaptations of anime are always done so odd. Yeah, man. The death. I, I had high hopes for the Death Note one, but yeah, they, they really fucked that up. For one, they shouldn't have made that a movie. They should have just went ahead and made that an entire like show on its own. And right. they should have. They should have tried to like instead of like doing ten episodes. Like they should have known like right off the bat. Like okay, well, if we really put care into this, we can make this just. One go of 20 episodes. And because, like, we made a season that is a full 20 episodes, that's already going to get people talking right off the bat because it's like, whoa, they did 20 episodes instead of the normal 10 or 8? Like, they have, I don't know. 
Yeah, Netflix just really fucked that show up. Yeah. I was going to ask your guys' opinion uh, about Tron. Then, that was one of the things that came to my brain. Yeah. The uh, the new movie's coming out. I don't know if it's this year or next year. It's got... Um, Jared Leto. Jared Leto, yeah. I don't Have know they how started I feel filming it. that yet? I don't know. I've only seen the... Uh, like the 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 picture of it, yeah. It was on Facebook. I wonder, um, because there's a new Tron game coming out. Oh, is it really? Yeah, but it's um, it's like a visual novel type game. So it's a lot of still frame images, and you you selecting your your choice of what you want to happen okay, in the yeah. scene. Um, I think it's like a you're like a, some type of like t- detective inside the inside the 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 system. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, the, uh, the art looks like the new Tron movie, a, a, a Tron game with like the uh, the cyberpunk feel to it would be cool. Yes, yes, that'd be sweet. Have like an open world and all that, and let you be able to maybe uh, choose different types of light cycles and just be able to spawn a light cycle. See, I was just you thinking about writing one. You're over here thinking way ahead of me already. Be able to customize your light cycle would be cool. Because I think that they've, they've shown like three or four different versions of like light cycles, and then you could also do that four wheeled version of that light cycle that they get saved. Yeah, they had a, like a car thing. Yeah, that'd be so cool, dude. But yeah, do a city like, like a night city kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be sweet. How do you think the? Uh, we good. How do you think the movie's <laughs> gonna go? You guys have uh, high hopes for it. Especially with Jared Leto. I don't know, man. <laughs> See, that's that's the thing that makes me go, Ugh, I know. That's, Jared as soon Leto. as I saw him, I, I... He can do good work, man. If he can, he, but if he has he, good... I haven't seen him do good work for a couple of good years now. Know, so man. Yeah. So just so much of the time, I'm like, dude, this well, guy's... I feel like butt. he's gotten to the point where he might... I don't know. I think he might either think too highly of himself or he's gotten to a point where he's just completely surrounded by yes-men. There's a lot so, of people that said uh, that, you know, him doing that Joker, you know, really filled his head with, you know, false confidence. I don't think he did a very good job in the Joker. I don't think he did a very good job in Morbius, but, you know, you only have the most recent movies to go off of. And Morbius was... You thing, saw Morbius? Yeah, it was okay. And as far as Jared Leto's Joker, it's kind of hard to, like, completely blame him because they cut out, like, 90% of true. the stuff yeah. that they filmed of him. Well, the thing is, though, if you don't compare him to the other Jokers, he's not so bad. Like he d- he didn't play necessarily a bad Joker, but wasn't a good one either. Based off like the very first trailer they showed, the one that actually had like the dark, brooding music, like you, it looked like a good Joker, you know. But unfortunately, like what you saw in the trailer is kind of pretty much what you got in the yeah. movie, except they try to make him more corny. And I'm pretty sure, like, the movie was supposed to be a way darker tone, and then they were like, no, we want more Marvel movies. We want more fun, yeah. more jokes. <laughs> you think they, they would have done it like the, they did uh, the new Batman? It would have been better? Yes, 100%. More dark. I liked the the new Batman. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good. With the, the one with uh, Robert Pattinson. I don't know what the movie's called. Yeah, I'm stoked that they're continuing on with that. Oh, uh, are they really? Yeah, they're I didn't continuing hear that. with that. That's yeah. Cool. It, and speaking of that, that's part of what I wanted to talk about tonight was um, talking about some of the new movies that James Gunn announced. So he got on some some social media thing and basically was just ran down all of the new products, like movies and TV shows that are coming out from DC. Because you guys heard that he took over, yeah. right? So... Um, would you guys want to go over some of them? Yeah, sure. Anything big coming up? Well, um, I, I think I may have saw the same list, and wasn't a lot of it just like a lot of a lot of it was a lot lesser known stuff. Well, he's got some stuff in there like um, like Swamp Thing. Yeah, I remember that one. Sw- Another one was uh, like Young Superman or something like that. Yeah, it's called Superman Legacy. What's that supposed to be about? I mean, obviously Superman, but <laughs> Superman. I mean, Superman. if it's supposed to be a, a young Superman, is it him before? Like, he really does anything? You know, he, back on the farm, or like, how are they portraying it? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't really know. 
I feel like that's going to make or break the movie. Um, it's he's pretty much they all they've said is it's not an origin story. It focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. Um, he's in a world that thinks kindness is old fashioned, but that's going to be like the first movie of their DC slate comes out on July eleventh, twenty twenty five. You can already assume that'll be pushed back. Um, another show that I probably one of the ones that I'm most excited for is uh, Lanterns. It's going to be like a Green Lantern oh, TV yeah. show. I think I did hear about that. I'm not sure how I feel about the the, the it being show. Well, but. they're saying it's supposed to be in the vein of True Detective. So it'll be like a because the Lanterns are the universe's police. Yeah, I was so, talking to uh, that'd be sweet. I was talking to Faye about that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I don't. I didn't know how I felt about him being like a detective, but yeah, you're right. They are kind of like police. Yeah, I think it would be cool to see some, you know, really cool detective work in the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sweet. He's, um, he's gonna be like a a cop by day, a vigilante by night, taking people out with knows? his Green Lantern powers. I'd like to see it be an alien. And not a human character, but they'd cool. probably do a human character. And if they are going to do a human character, I'd like to see them do my favorite superhero of all time, Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner is the Green Lantern that was a comic book artist. So a lot of his inventions that he makes with the ring are cool stuff, like monsters and like really cool looking weapons and stuff like that. Stuff that like is inventive for the brain. Yeah, his stuff that comes out of his ring is so cool every time. Yeah, that's that's one thing that you really don't see that much they don't get very creative with the powers yeah it's usually like hey here's a sword here's yeah. a gun here's a, here's an airplane you know like here's a shield and stuff like yeah, that yeah personally green lantern is one of my favorite uh, superheroes so hopefully they uh branch out um the next one there he announces a movie called the authority um supposedly it's a movie based on a team of superheroes that has like extreme methods of protecting their planet um, they're from the Wildstorm universe. DC bought Wildstorm in the '90s, and basically, um, he what from what James Gunn said, not every film and TV show is going to be about good guy versus bad guy. Giant things from the sky come and go, or come and good guy wins. There are white hats, black hats, and gray hats. Um. They are kind of like Jack Nicholson and a few good men. They, yeah, it's very sounds very odd. I'm not really sure what they're going for with that. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, what it's, it. I don't know. It's just a team of characters that have a s specific method of how they take down stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I'm hmm. not sure. I'd imagine they're just probably all like dirty cops. For the, it's what it sounds like. Um, there's also a new show coming out. It's called Paradise Lost. Um, they described it as a Game of Thrones style drama that takes place on the all female island of Themyscira, where Wonder Woman comes from. Oh, that's all cool. right. Yeah, um, with all female islands comes all female sleepovers. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hey, he went there. Yep. Good job, Jack. We love you for it. <laughs> um, it takes place before all the Wonder Woman films, so that could be cool. We'll see. Um, the next one here is The Brave and the Bold. Um, this is like supposed to be a Batman show, but it's focusing more on Batman and all the extra characters in the Batman universe, like Batgirl, um, all the Robins, Nightwing, all those kind of characters. So like the Bat family, yeah, which could be cool if done right. Yeah, I'm still trying to get through that Dark Knights game. Oh, yeah, sorry, Gotham Knights. You're, you're the only person I've known that's playing that. Do you like it? It's get, it got so it's okay. So I, bad I've only reviews. played uh, the one character so far. You know, I'm waiting to play Red Hood. I think uh, if I switch it up, it might be an okay game, but it, it gets very stale pretty quick. That's what I've heard. Um, let's see here, the next one they announced is that Batman sequel, the Batman. So that's it's supposed to be. It's not the Batman is not going to be part of their like universe they're creating. They have like other titles that are going to be called the like part of the Elseworlds universe, 
And this is one of them. So this Batman is not going to be the Batman that's in the Brave and the Bold. So the Batman that's in the this universe is Robert Pattinson. But they're going to have a new Batman for like the Brave and the Bold and all the other movies going forward with that one. Yeah. I'm glad they're doing that because, I mean, why, I mean, why not do it? Stuff like that. Like, you can clearly tell, like, whenever, like, these movies come out, like, if you're a fan of them in any way, that, like, okay, well, just like comics, there's going to be different iterations of them, so. Right. Yeah. Because they're also still doing that uh, Joker movie. The one that's going to be a musical with Lady Gaga. It's also Ugh. part of the Elseworlds thing. I'm going to watch it, and I'm probably going to end up liking it. But, dude, I, I, I'm i sorry, man. I dislike Lady Gaga, man. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, The next one here is Booster Gold. Do you guys know about Booster Gold at all? No. Booster Gold. Yeah, he's uh, the coolest rooster ever out on uh, McFarland Farm. I said Booster. Oh, Booster Sorry, Gold, bro. he's I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> he's he's from the future and he's got like a bunch of futuristic technology and he goes back to the to the present day and he just basically is mimicking a superhero. But all he's got is future technology. So he's not really a superhero, but he's just but nobody like, knows that because he's got all that technology. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, James Gunn described it as like um a superhero with imposter syndrome. He said he was a rooster. Booster. Oh. <laughs> Booster Gold. <laughs> no, I've never Rooster heard of that. Rolled. <laughs> it's like a rooster with a superhero technology. Yeah. That does sound pretty good. It's pretty cool. Um Booster Gold is actually a cool character. Um a lot of a lot of cool time travel type stuff with him. Um the next one here is Supergirl World of Tomorrow, which is um a pretty cool it's based off a pretty cool like supergirl comic i think based off the same kind of the same name but uh supergirl done right is really cool cuz she basically was just kind of floating in space and in in some versions and they find her and you know and she's batman or super cut she's superman's cousin but she's older than him okay. at the time but really she's younger than him i don't know mm. Whenever Superman gets sent to Earth, she's actually older than him at the time because she's like, I don't know, in her teenage years. Now, are they going to go Game of Thrones with this one and have them both, like, you know? Do it? <laughs> yeah. I seriously doubt it. You think they're going to wrestle? <laughs> yeah, they're going to wrestle. <laughs> one of them going to get the finger four on the other? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um... And the next one here is Swamp Thing. Do you know much about Swamp Thing? I've never read the comic, but I know that it's um, DC property. Yeah, it's it's kind of on the periphery of some of the Sandman type stuff. It intersects with some of the Sandman continuity. But uh, it's supposed to be a horror film that closes out the first chapter of DC's. They're calling it like Gods and Monsters. They're called their first phase. So that closes out the first phase of the James Gunn type movies. Um, they also said they've got that Blue Beetle movie coming out, and that stars the the kid from Cobra Kai. Oh, that's cool! You know the one that breaks his back or whatever, or like gets paralyzed, like falls off off that stair set in like the third season. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the main kid in Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah, he's playing Jaime Reyes. For Blue Beetle. Do you know much about Blue Beetle? No, I don't. I, no, not at all, really. Like an alien kind of symbiote type thing takes over, like attaches it to a kid's back and makes them have that cool Blue Beetle suit. But uh, like in the old version of Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, I'm pretty sure his name is Ted Cord. I think it is. But he's like pretty much the Iron Man of the DC Universe. He makes his own suit and stuff like that. He's like a tech guy and stuff it's but this version of blue beetle is the alien version stuck to his back but, uh, i like that version yeah it's blue beetle i've always thought was pretty cool um and then you also got shazam fury of the gods did you guys like the first shazam no nah, not really i like the first shazam did you like it uh it was right in the middle for me like yeah. a solid five out of ten 
I hope the new one's good. There was, a, there was parts of it that I liked, but there was a lot of it that I did not it, like at all. That's what I would say. There was definitely parts that I liked, but I didn't really care for the movie. And then we also have uh, the Flash movie, which that movie's been up in flux because the main guy, um, well, it's... He... Ezra Miller? Yeah, it, it's, it's a it's a they. He doesn't. He's like a guy and a girl. I heard they're they bringing him back for it. Well, but fuck yeah. them. He's... They seem like an asshole. Yeah, they are just a seem like a real piece of shit kind of per, kind of person. Uh, yeah, that's what I heard. I, I thought that's why they fired him originally. They yeah, they fired they um yeah. Them. Then th- that <laughs> they haven't been fired. Okay. Yeah, they're still part of that Flash movie, and that Flash movie is supposed to like rewrite parts of the DC universe, and hopefully they don't cut out the Michael Keaton parts, man. Sounds like they might have cut out the Michael Keaton parts of the movie. Because Michael Keaton was coming back to be Batman. He was also going to be in that Batgirl movie. And Brendan Fraser was going to be Firefly in yeah, the new I heard Batman, they cut that Batgirl out. movie. He's and not, they completely yeah. shelved that whole movie, vaulted it, and it'll never come out. So it must have been really bad, though. From what James Gunn and that Peter's after, or the, the new the guy that's taken over with James Gunn, they supposedly the movie was awful. Mm. I was looking forward to uh, watching Brendan Fraser, though. You yeah, think they were just cool. going to use word of mouth like Michael Keaton and Brendan Fraser in this, and they're just basically trying to use that to grab cash from them? You Maybe. Really, you think it sounds like it. You think Brendan Fraser, after all that, would, would be in a bad movie? You know, coming back up? I mean, you never truly know when you're filming a movie if it's a bad movie until it gets cut and edited. That's true. So maybe his part was good. Yeah. yeah, you think like all those people in like those sci-fi movies, like back in the day, like like Mega Shark Attack Three stuff like that. You think like before they walked on set, like man, this is gonna be some, this is good, good CGI this yeah. time. This is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be my my shotgun or my little slingshot to the top here. Yeah, little slingshot. <laughs> Who knows, man? Um. Did you guys have anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Shit. So I know this is messed up, but like, you know, last week we were talking about, um, like animals that we thought were sexy. Yeah. You you want to dive back into that? No, I don't want to dive (laughs) back in. It's got real weird. Have you guys ever saw like a, (laughs) an inanimate object and thought that thing is, that thing could be hot. Like, say, a broom with a nice, like, a mop. <laughs> with a nice mop <laughs> nah, of, hair. <laughs> of string hair. <laughs> nah, I, I'd say, like, whenever I was going through puberty and I was, like, just starting to, like, you know, get stiff ones, I, I would start looking at, like, I don't know, like, creases and couches and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 I'd see, like, creases like that and be like, hmm, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking stuff like that all the time. Like I've like rarely like I don't think I ever I think like maybe once or twice I tried to fuck the cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god! <laughs> Not sure how uh, you would do that. I don't know if I, I think, I think the it. first I think the first time I was like, well, this is uncomfortable, and the second time I was like, well, maybe I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, did you go to do it? The second time, uh, it was like a pure realization where I was like, you know what? It's just, it's not worth it. (laughs) So, like, while you were in there fishing for gold, did you uh, happen to find anything? Like, some some cookie crumbs or uh, (laughs) some car keys? I never pulled anything out. No, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. I never never pulled out no Cheeto dust or anything like that. I mean, you're in there. You're in there already. Kyle, what did you fuck when you were in there? Oh, God. (laughs) my god Jackson oh man I really can't th- think of anything that I I can't think of anything either I, I, you know there's a lot of people that uh, try and stick their dick in, in, in a vacuum cleaner <laughs> <laughs> I think that's as close as I'd come bro I did that <laughs> <laughs> that surprised me yeah I did a lot of like weird shit when I was like 12 11 or whatever when I was just, I was just starting to get stiffies bro and I was just like I didn't know. I still even know what sex was. I just was like, man, like my my 
dick is hard right now. It's like, tingly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this thing is tingling, and anytime like, any anytime I touch it against something that's like not myself, like it feels freaking sweet. So. <laughs> you know, he was uh. Yeah, so, of course, I'm sorry to cut you off, but You're of good. course the vacuum cleaner was, like, one of the first things I thought of. I was like, dude, it's got that hose, you know? So, like, one out of ten. But, and and I, got, I got to tell you, man, there's nothing exciting about it. <laughs> Negative one. But then again, I did it at, a, a, like, 12, 11 years old, so this is, like, my 12, 11-year-old memory. Maybe I would fill that hose out a lot more now. <laughs> I mean, there are different attachments. <laughs> I mean, you the can't jet at the pool, bro. <laughs> oh, for sure, the jet at the pool. Yes, yeah. Like, like if there's one thing that every guy can relate to, it's the jet at the pool. <coughs> and every lifeguard on duty knows when the kid found the jet at the pool because it's like that kid's been there for like at least five <laughs> minutes, not moving or anything. Not talking yeah. To anyone. yeah, they don't care. He's not drowning. <laughs> Yep, he's just pleasuring himself in the pool. <laughs> Out in public. You know, he Jackson, when his whole life, he had to know what a couch felt like. <laughs> I never, like, I think that was, like, I think those instances were, like, the farthest I've ever gone. Like, I can't think of anything else. I can't think of any time I, like, fucked a pie or anything like that. Yeah, I, I just a... The two occasions where I fucked the kid, tried to fuck a couch, but it was like maybe like five seconds of like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Be interesting to walk in on. Yeah, I think that's like what stopped me like every time. Like I'd like start and I'd be like, well, this doesn't feel good. Like, what if someone catches me? <laughs> yeah, I get like explaining that one. I think it was just one of those things just like, well, I'm going to find out. <laughs> I want to find out if this is really cool or if this is just like not. And it turns out it wasn't. <laughs> like, did you go down the list? <laughs> there Couch. wasn't that big of a list. Oh, God. It's like, parents are gone. What do we got here? <laughs> Chair, <laughs> one cushion. <laughs> Couch, three cushions. Vacuum cleaner. <laughs> When parents are away, Jackson will fuck the couch. <laughs> well, I, I kind of took over that subject. Kyle, this is your thing. Like, what, what, I'm just what did you have in mind when you you're know, thinking about you have to put plastic over the couch? Yeah, we can't leave Jackson alone with our with my couch. Um, I always, you know, you know, you look at a lava lamp and you think that kind of looks like a chick with a fat ass, like maybe some round hips. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. So yeah. that's what you meant by sexy objects. Yeah. Man, that lava <laughs> lamp, she looks thick. Well, in that case, shark tanks. Okay. So there's something about shark tanks that I'm just like, yo. The squareness of it? The rectangular shape of it? No, like a shark, like an illuminated shark tank in the middle of a dark room. Like, imagine like a, just a massive shark tank that's like in front of you on a wall. You're going to try to tell me that you're not going to, like, try to crank one out by yourself or, like, if you got someone. I'm just saying, like, if you've got that kind of room, man, like, that's like a, that's like, okay, I've made it to some kind of powerful position in life to be in this room at this, some point. Like, I'm fucking in this room, whether it's by myself or, like, if someone wants to join me. The uh, the sharks really get him going. <laughs> they don't you? Like, did the scenario that I just talked to you about, like, not immediately just, like, get you rock steady? No. <laughs> no, sharks definitely don't do it for me. Dolphins, maybe. <laughs> well, dolphins are humans evolved. That's true. So it's okay. <laughs> it's not that weird at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You said lava lamps. I, I, I went with it. I went shark tanks. It's cool, man. Yeah. It doesn't have to be sharks in it. You, you know no. what? Make a jellyfish, man. Just yeah. a giant jellyfish aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's cool, man. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> come Jackson. on, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> Back me up here. <laughs> yeah, what you got, Andrew? I don't got nothing. <laughs> what you, you got think any cool? objects uh, that, like... 
you look at the Aunt Jemima like pancake mix or anything like that when you're younger and just go, oh, come on. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, you one, one thing that comes to mind is the, uh, you say Aunt Jemima, who's that? <laughs> oh, the syrup container, the syrup thing. Yeah. Oh, sh- yeah. That's what I was about to say, actually. I didn't even know who Aunt Jemima was. I was thinking about the, the syrup container. <laughs> what about Uncle Ben's rice? You oh, God. You that looks good? Mm. Quaker oatmeal guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love me some Uncle Ben. <laughs> you ever see that? They like, immediately get the theme song in your head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that man, that commercial lives right free in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I know that commercial. Oh, man. I still think of that music like constantly, dude. So many 90s commercials that just live rent-free in my brain. I heard the, uh, the Super Bowl commercials are going to be really weird. Looking forward to watching them. God, I hope Bruce Willis makes me hug everyone again. <laughs> and when this comes out, the Super Bowl would have already happened. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have no idea what the commercials were, but I'm, I'm hoping they're good. I, I hope they, they're they more. I hope every single one of them leans into comedy. They showed them on, on TV. There was a commercial, I guess, that had all the uh, the Super Bowl commercials. Uh, Aline at work was telling me about it. She said they were pretty funny. They better be. If you're putting if you're putting up so that amount of money to put a commercial up during the Super Bowl, yeah. you better grab everyone's attention with humor because yeah. anything other than that is just going to piss people off. Like, okay. Because no, some people watch the Super Bowl for the commercials, and if you give them something that's not funny or is entertaining... Get out of here. Yeah. Who's uh, playing for the halftime show? Rihanna. Yeah, Rihanna. Is Rihanna? Wow. Riri's back. Shy yeah. Ronnie better make an appearance. <laughs> I doubt it. All right, you guys want to go ahead and move into Yo Dude, check this out? Yeah. Okay. Yo Dude. Hey, yo, what's up? Check this out. Yo Dude. Oh. Doing the background, <laughs> doing the background. Oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> I felt so weird doing it at the time. <laughs> All right, yo, dude, check this out. Did you know that the Oakland Athletics and their stadium is a pretty much like a home to like a hundred like feral wayward cats? Where's this? That in Oakland. Oakland. The Oakland A Stadium. Really. Yeah, that's cool. They have a, they have a feral cat problem, and they have an opossum problem. Problem? That sounds supposedly awesome to that me. <laughs> stadium is a dump, and it's always been a dump. Oh yeah, it is a hardcore dump. I watched an entire video about the Oakland days earlier. It started out with like them talking about like this is the reason why the movie Moneyball has ruined the athletics, and I was like, all right, you've you <laughs> here's the hook. You caught me. <laughs> so. I started watching it, and then about halfway through it, they were just like, yeah, this place is infested with opossums and cats. Like, And then they went through a montage of like all the games where they just had a cat run onto the field and stuff like that. And they were just like, are, well, are you going to do anything about these cats? They're like, well, no, they, they help with the rat problem. They barely have like a rat problem that's like 10 times worse than both the cats and the possums, but they can't do anything about it. Dang. So they're just like, well, we'll let the cats stay out here. <laughs> Dang, that's insane. Like, the, um, in the announcer's booth, where they call the game, they have freaking opossum traps and stuff like that. They got traps up there to try to catch opossums because that's where the number one place they've caught opossums is, is the announcer's box. Wow. Yeah, the Oakland days <laughs> sound terrible, man. Dang. But um, yeah, like the more I've looked into Oakland A's, it just sounds like, man, it sounds like the owner of that team just tries to spend the absolute smallest amount of money like possible. Yeah. Like every single year. Probably doesn't have any money. It, it probably has a shit ton of money. Think so? If you're a, if you're an owner of a club in any of the major leagues, you got to be making a bunch of money no matter what, even if you're not really selling tickets. You're just being stingy, you know? Cheapskate. Um, yo, dude, check this out. There is a syndrome called third man syndrome. Have you guys ever heard of it? Third man syndrome. Yeah. I haven't heard of it. So, 
basically um, a lot of like mountain climbers and explorers during traumatic survival situations have reported that um, there will be like a th- a third unseen presence, like an unseen presence reported by these people. Basically, that person will be there giving practical advice and encouragement to these people as they're like going through these hardcore situations. Isn't that crazy? So they'll be just like on the side of a mountain about to die. And another person will just show up right next to him and be like, Hey, dude, you got this, man. We're going to get through this together. Basically, it's Bear Grylls in it, like, push forward. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. there's been reports of people being in, like, crazy car wrecks, and they're sitting there, like, in a flip car, and like a, the and someone will be right behind them being like, hey, guy, hey man, it's going to be okay. The ambulance is coming. Yeah. It's one of those weird situations where the ambulance is already right, right behind you. Yeah. Like, you um, get in an accident, and here comes an ambulance. Dude, me and uh, me and my old friend TJ Normand, yeah, we were we had left our friend Taylor's house, <clears throat> and I've already think I told the story on the podcast before, but I put my seatbelt on. We 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 had just left my friend's house. We were about to leave the leave the parking lot. I put my seatbelt on. As we were backing up in his car, I had a thought go through my brain of take your seatbelt off. So I take my seatbelt off. Within like fifteen seconds, we veer off the road, and as we veer off the road. Um, we go off of like, a, like a, you know, how some roads have like a, a little ditch under the road and it was like one, one of these big concrete V ditches. We went right off the road and flipped the car and landed on the roof of, uh, it was like in a, one of those soft shell eclipses. Yeah. So it was a convertible and we, we just flipped the car and landed upside down. But luckily because I took my seatbelt off, I rolled with the car, but right behind us was an off duty firefighter. It was just right behind us to watch the whole thing go down. Runs out there. I'm an off-duty firefighter. I just saw you guys with your car. Like, don't move. I got you guys. And got us out within seconds. Yeah. And, and even for, for people like the firefighters or policemen, like being off-duty, like there's still probably a lot of stuff that they haven't seen and be able to uh, to see an accident happen right in front of you and, and already be able to help. It's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Like I've got pictures of... The car wreck, like, afterwards, and the car is completely crushed. Yeah. And my side of the car looks like I should have gotten, like, paralyzed. When I had your plane off the highway, I'm, I'm glad I didn't flip because my car already got really beat up going down into the ditch. I remember when you came to work that day, you were pretty stunned. Man. Yeah. Yeah, And was. you still have that car, don't you? Yeah. I actually fixed it all up for Faye. Oh, yeah. Didn't Jesse fix it? Like, did Jesse get the battery fixed? Uh, No. It turns out that the battery was actually uh, dead. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sat over the over the winter, and mm. yeah, I forgot to uh, start it every once in a while. Nice. Uh, the year the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, on the way up here, um, that was like when there was like just snow flurry, like just starting to happen, and I skidded off of the highway. Like <laughs> that was so freaking crazy, and it was mainly because like all of a sudden, like as I was coming across the bridge, like the flurries just started happening like hard. Like I went through like a period of nothing on the road, and then all of a sudden snow flurry and it just made the road slick really really quick yeah and in front of me there was a bunch of cars that were come to a stop and i just wasn't paying attention like and i was like oh shit as soon as i hit the brakes immediately it was like you ain't got no traction (laughs) (laughs) i slid off the side of the road was luckily was able to like drive right back on there was a cop in the medium between the two roads or in the median, whatever you want to call it. And he was just driving down. He saw me slide <coughs> off and come back on. And as soon as I got back on the road, I was like, hope he doesn't try to pull me over. <laughs> I was like, what would he pull me over is like for? I was going the speed limit. It's just, yeah, everything sucks at that moment. Like, here's a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Circle on the highway. Andrew, you got one? Yeah. I love animals. So uh, you want to start it off with yo, dude? Yes. Yo, dude, check this out. It says flamingos can only eat when its head is upside down. Wow. Huh. Huh. The reason I went with uh, the flamingo is because nobody ever talks about them. We actually like, talked about them last week on the podcast. Oh, did you really? Oh, my God. I got yeah, as an one. animal that I would, uh, if I was an alien and had to have sex with an animal, 
it would be a flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> because it's because of the pink. kneecaps. Yeah. Kneecaps. And we had to say alien the entire time because Connor just c- was seriously not would down not get it. on board he with was, the premise. <laughs> Connor was like, I'm not going to have sex with an animal, but if I was an alien. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah. Here's another it's like, one. man, you can't just live in hypothetical land for one second. Yeah, he doesn't want anybody 10 years later calling him on it. We love you, Connor. I just said that I fucked couches. <laughs> That's true. I love you, Jackson. I thought, I thought this one was cool as well. It was about the giraffe. It says, yo, dude, check this out. The giraffe has no vocal cords and communicates by vibrating the air around its neck. What? So it just goes like... Yeah. That's crazy, dude. It's a weird uh, animal. Uh, leader of um, uh, Naboo does the same thing. The gun guns? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I okay. That. that makes sense. I can't do the sound. He's almost like a fish, though, isn't he? Yeah, they're all like almost like frog things. Yeah. yeah. Man, the more you know. Good job, Andrew. Well, uh, I think that's going to end the podcast, man. Yeah, I can't think of any other wacky animal facts. I'd <laughs> no, man. Off the top of my head. Andrew, dude, thank you for being on episode 73 of oh, Crashing yeah. with Friends, man. Appreciate it, guys. You're welcome, dude. Bro. We love having you on, man. I hope you come on again sometime. It's good to be here. Oh, yeah. Can we get a firm commitment on you coming back someday? Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> we got him, guys. <laughs> Confirmed. Okay. Well, I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And uh, just remember this. Don't mess with person that has access to your toothbrush. Yeah, that's true. Don't be mean to that person because they may mess with your toothbrush. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Something happened to you? No, I'm just saying don't be mean to that special someone. Okay. As far as he knows, nothing's happened to his toothbrush. Yeah. (laughs) I love you, Jackson. Just always remember that. (laughs) You want to hug again on, on the air? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> He's thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, well, hug, you hug me again. I'm going to do something to your toothbrush for sure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, thank you guys for crashing with friends. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. I'll see you guys all next week. Later. Later. Bye. Crashing with friends. Podcast.